so that's Oscar. Any any other ideas? Cool. Okay, so I am going to go to the church. The church? Why? I see what you're thinking. Stella was confronted with evidence of the afterlife, so she might try getting into all that religious stuff. It's worth checking out. I think we'd be barking up the wrong tree, but I guess you're right. There's no point in not being thorough. I wouldn't mind stocking up on some holy water while we're there, too. Seems like a good idea to cover all our bases at this point. I don't think the Baptists do the holy water thing, but I'm sure Pastor Daniel would pretend to bless some water if it meant keeping us around a little longer. Yeah, that's like a Catholic tradition. Yeah, that's good enough for me. Let's not linger. I don't want to... Let's not linger, though. I don't want him to thinking we're possible converts. I just feel like we haven't been here before, right? So I just want to see what's up. <gasps> She's feeding the llamas. Oh, I want to meet them. Kanika leads the way, taking you up the gradual slope towards the church. I wonder if we'll get to go everywhere, or if this is going to be our last stop. I just figured again that we'd never been here before, so. You know, I've lived here for a few years now, and I've never actually been to the church. That's probably for good reason. Where is that weirdo? My, my, four visitors at once on a Thursday? This is unprecedented. But there's only three of us. Oh no, we're not followed by a ditchling. <gasps> it's Zane! Sup, old people. Oh, it's Zane. What are you doing here? All the glimpses of death I've had in the past two days have forced me into the midst of an existential crisis, my dudes. I just want to see if Faith has any answers for me. Alas, I have not yet found the solace I seek. Give it time, Zane. It sometimes takes a while for the world- Oh my god. It sometimes takes a while for the Lord to work his way into your heart. But when he does, you won't regret letting him in. Be sure to look over those pamphlets I gave you. And of course, I'm always here if you need to talk. They always give you pamphlets rather than actually talking to you. It's so irritating. Sure thing, Pastor D. Peace, y'all. Uh, anyway, we're looking for Stella. She wandered off last night and no one has seen her since. We're starting to get pretty worried. We hoped maybe you or Janie had seen her. I can't speak for Janie. But I'm afraid I've seen neither hide nor hair of Stella. If you'd like to talk to my wife, she's just over by the alpacas. Though you, Abs, I was hoping we might be able to talk in private. Uh, what do you have to say of her that you can't say in front of us? I, er, please, if you wouldn't mind, this is a personal matter. It's alright, we can get the juicy details later. I'd rather folks not pry on this. You know how rumors get started. Um, what if he does something crazy? I don't want to go by myself. This man is a creepo. See, I don't want to miss some important information. So I don't know if I should press this. But I'm not pressing this. Let's just talk with him. If you're sure, uh, I guess we'll leave you to it while we check in with Janie. We'll be right over there by the fence, if that's conveniently in your line of sight, okay? See you in a minute. Your friends head off towards Janie and the alpacas, leaving you alone with the nervous pastor. Okay, at least we're not going in the church with him. I had a chat with the mayor yesterday. I heard you did too. I'm so glad you came. I've never met anyone else who could hear them. You have no idea how long I thought I might- I must have had some kind of insanity. I even thought that at one point- I even thought that at one point it must have been the Lord himself talking to me through them. But they never had anything very insightful to say, so I was disavowed of that pretty early on. So he can talk to animals, or is he just saying that so that he thinks- to make us be able to confide in him, you know? Why do we suffer this fate? Have you met Frufru, Gretchen, Pixel? Of course I have. 
but I learned early on in life to not let, let on that I have this gift, at least while other humans are around, so I haven't spoken with any of them. That's sus. That's really sus. I feel like he's just using it. Though I get the feeling Fufu won't talk to me even if she knew I could understand her. I've tried to befriend the alpaca while no one else is around. Emphasis on tried. They're surprisingly clicky. <laughs> That's really funny. Besides that, I try to maintain a low profile, only chatting with the wildlife when I'm sure no one is looking. Yeah, because if someone's like walking by or something and you're chatting with them, they might just think, oh, you're just talking to them, you know? You know what I mean? Like, like you get up in the morning and you talk to your cat, you know, but you don't actually expect your cat to answer or anything. And, and, but indeed he is, but they don't know that, you know what I mean? Are you sure we're actually talking to animals? Now that I know that there are at least two of us, I have no doubt. There have definitely been times in my life when I thought I might just be insane. I think he is insane, but you know, never mind. But it's so consistent, I've, and I've never exhibited any other signs of insanity. <laughs> maybe there, maybe you're just, you know, a, like, maybe through your rose-colored glasses you don't see it. Sorry, that was kind of rude. But, you know, maybe his own perspective is blinding him from the other obvious signs of craziness. I mean, this man is very... A little too, like, radical in his beliefs of God. If that is actually what he believes, what he was telling us in the library. In my most doubting moments, I have considered the possibility that other entities may be using the animals to confuse my faith. But besides, see, everything is about freaking faith which is fine but it shouldn't to me personally and i don't want to step on any toes or anything but personally to me it shouldn't be only about that <laughs> you know what i mean like yeah morals are very important but like i mean other stuff you know what i mean like you have to think of your family you have to think of your friends you know what i mean there's other things that you have to be aware of too and yourself you know? But besides a peculiarly vicious hamster I had growing up, the most an animal has ever tried to convince me to do is give them more food. <laughs> so I somehow doubt they're puppets for some otherworldly evil, unless that otherworldly evil wants me to overfeed my pets. <laughs> I can't express how much of a relief it is to finally meet someone else like me. I hope you don't think that the two of us sharing the gift means we're friends. I hope you know that none of this means the two of us are bonded for life. Best friends. Does Janie know? Great. The one person I've met who shares my talent is a religious weirdo. <laughs> I just want to... This might be stupid. I don't know. I might cut this, but... I just wanted to say, uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with religion. I don't have anything against religion. I don't have anything against anybody's beliefs. You know, as long as you don't believe in, like, killing people. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, as long as it's not something that is harmful to other people. But too much, if anything, is bad. And sometimes people go too far with religion. Is how I feel about it. But uh, again, I'm not against religion, so I would never say, oh, he's a religious weirdo, but he is wild, <laughs> but I would never say that to anyone, even just a, a character in a game. I can't express how much of a relief it is to finally meet someone. Does Janie know? I really want to know if Janie knows. No, I don't believe there should be secrets between man and wife. So I'll have to tell her one day, but there hasn't been a good time yet. Building a life in Scarlet Hollow has been a difficult process, and it's the last thing I need to do. And the last thing I need to do is to add the stress of her husband being some kind of circus act. Tulip, on the other hand, I'm starting to have my suspicions that she may share this gift. Who's Tulip? Does he have a child? There have been some particularly nasty rats in the church lately. And she said some things that have led me to believe she might have been able to understand them. Oh, that scared me. 
Oh, is that her? Oh, she's cute. He's interrupted by the sounds of a snapping twig and a high-pitched giggle, partially muffled by the underbrush on the edge of the property. God, that jump scared me so bad, y'all. <laughs> oh, I'm on edge. Tulip, come out of there. You know you're not supposed to play in the woods. Tulip glances back into the woods, quiet as she hesitates. Tulip, are you going to be good or are we going to skip story time tonight? I'll be good, you don't have to skip story time. I won't go into the woods, I promise. I know you won't, Tulip, because you know it's too dangerous for little girls in there. Why don't you go help Mama with the alpacas? It's just about time they got fed. You can give them hay. Aw, she was happy. Tulip smiles broadly, seemingly excited about the prospect and hurries off. Sorry, I had to have a firm parenting moment just then. She's been trying to run off into the woods a lot lately, and it's really dangerous, even for adults. I agree. But also, bro, don't apologize to me for your parenting. That's totally up to your discretion. You know, as long as there's no child abuse happening. You know, it's totally up to your discretion to try to keep your kids safe, you know. There's this massive trash dump not too far past the trees, but it must be at least 50 years old, so it's all grown over and looks like it's part of the landscape. But if you accidentally walk in on it, but if you accidentally walk on it, you might find yourself falling into hip-deep mound of rusty cans and broken glass. Oh, that's disgusting. Oh, Tetanus Lake. Tetanus? Tet is that Tetanus Lake? <laughs> How big a trash dump we talking? Would a weekend of hard work clear it out? Maybe if you had construction equipment and a team of professionals. It's a big area. I have no idea how deep it goes. In the meantime, I'm just making sure t Tulip goes nowhere near it. Tetanus Lake? That's an accurate name. I wonder if Tulip would stay away if I started calling it that. Or if it would only make it sound more alluring. True. What were you saying about the church rats? Ah, uh, yes, the rats. So you and I are used to that sort of chatter we hear from wildlife. It's usually nothing that needs to be paid attention to. But these rats, there's something so sinister about them. And they must be huge, judging by the sound of them scurrying around in there. Tulip had never shown evidence of the ability before. She never responded to the alpacas or engaged in conversations with the birds. In retrospect, she could have been hiding it the way I did when I was growing up. Because I know she's been talking to the rats. She calls them her friends, has been drawing all these pictures of them, really ghastly things. I'm trying to bring it up with her, but she just ke gets this little smile and doesn't say a word. It's like it's her fun little secret. Oh god, the child is creepy now. <laughs> It's creeping me out. Because if she's like him, but then she's also like the mom who is like... So at the beginning, when I was going through the recap, I was saying like, oh, if Janie was actually like, you know, a really sinister person, like actually, it would be so creepy because she seems so innocent. And even if you like, it makes you uncomfortable, you still internally reassure yourself. Like, if the kid was like that, but then also mildly evil? Oh my god. That would be crazy. That kid's gonna be trouble. It's all innocent enough in the grand scheme of things, but I'm pretty sure they also live out in that trash heap. And ever since she started talking about her friends, she's been trying to sneak out there. I'm concerned she's going to get hurt. Or catch some kind of disease. What have they been saying? Have you seen them? Has Janie heard them? Are you sure they're rats? That's really creepy, dude. <laughs> what have they been saying? They like to try to goad me into crying or becoming depressed. They watch me through the unseen holes and make fun of me and try to figure out how to press my buttons. It's annoying, but easy enough to block out, especially when I'm praying. The sky. I don't think they're a good influence on Tulip, though. She's gotten quiet and secretive ever since she started talking to them. Maybe the rats are the cult! 
Maybe the rats are doing everything that's wrong with the town. Just kidding, I don't know. I'd hate to think what they say to her when I'm not around to hear. Yeah. They say probably say some bad stuff. Have you actually seen them? No, but I don't need to. I've lived in a dorm that had rats once. You never see them, but the church has all signs of an infestation, and there's no mistaking the sound of little creatures stampeding through the walls. Why don't you, yeah, get rid of them? They're too smart for the traps. Oh, okay. All it's done is waste peanut butter. I caught a possum in one. Poor thing. Possums are never very bright, but at least he got a nice big scoop of peanut butter out of the ordeal. <laughs> Aww. Has Janie heard them? He said he's pretty sure they're rats. Janie can't... Well... Well, again, I guess she could hear them scurrying. She's not in the church very often. She's usually in town doing her jobs until late. And we spend our evenings in the house. It's just me and Tulip all day long. Oh, that poor child. Janie knows Tulip has made some strange little friends, but thinks it's an imagination game. I was hoping I'd sort out the rat issue before she could get suspicious, but they're persistent, so I may have to hire an exterminator, if I can get the money for one. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I hope it doesn't have to come to that. Maybe he's putting on a front, but it seems like he cares about animals, which is a big star in my book, I guess. A positive thing, in other words. Have you tried befriending them? Maybe Tulip's onto something. True. He said he was going to talk to his wife, so I'm sure eventually he's going to talk to Tulip, too. Have you tried befriending them? I can't say I'm interested. They don't seem like they'd be good friends. And I don't usually use strong language like this. But I hate rats. Those tails. Ugh. He shudders. God knew exactly what he was doing when he ma made rats. They look just as bad as the diseases they carry. No way would I want to get cuddly with one let alone let any of them get close to Tulip. Still, I suppose I could try talking to them. And if that fails, maybe you could lend a hand. I don't want to be too much of a bother, and you should probably finish looking for your missing friend first. But I'll be around if you have time to check in later this week. Out of the corner of your eye, you see Kanika and Avery walking back to the two of you. They must have finished talking to Janie. Janie says she hasn't seen Stella either, so we'd better get going. Thanks for suggesting we head up here, Abs. We got to feed the alpacas. They were so cute and soft. It was awesome. Oh my god, I want to pet one. <laughs> I've never been able to do that. I think that would be so much fun. Like IRL. Oh my god. And Janie says she'll come by the diner with cookies for the miners. And a few extra for me, of course. Uh, I hope your talk with the pastor went well. Yes, we had a great conversation. I appreciate you all stopping by, even if it wasn't under the best circumstances. I'll let y'all be on your way. And I hope Stella turns up soon. I'll put in some good prayers with the big man for her. All right, thanks, see ya. Kanika and Avery start back down the path to town, and you follow. So, uh, what was that about? He seemed pretty insistent on talking to you alone. Yeah, and he didn't say anything weird, did he? I'm not gonna say that. I'll say that. I don't want to give up the guy's secret, if he's so keen on keeping it. That's his prerogative, even if he's mildly a whack. Kids make up imaginary friends all the time. Pastor Daniel, <clears throat> Pastor Daniel says there's a rat infestation in the church and that the rats are friends. I don't know, it seemed weird. I should know, I should have known we'd have to deal with a spooky kid at some point. Okay, as much as I hate going back there, I guess that's a loose lead. If we don't have anything else to investigate once we've found Stella and... Once we've checked out the clinic, then maybe look around the church. Sounds like a plan. Let's not get too distracted until we find Stella, though. Where to next? Okay, oh, yes, we could still do stuff. Should we go to the cops? Maybe we do that last if we can keep going. If we go to the diner, Avery might stop going with us. 
So let's go to the mines first. I guess there's a decent chance Stella went to find her cousin. I can't say I get it, but it's definitely something she would do. You don't see it? Oh, come on. The two of them have such a dynamic, you know. Classic dog and cat situation. Come on, I'll drive us. Cool. You follow Kanika to her van. It isn't long before you find your side. Yeah. You f it isn't long until you find yourselves outside the Scarlet Mines. Here's the strike. This Scarlet, more like toilet. <laughs> That's the first thing I saw. A wall of bodies, picketing signs, and megaphones in hand forms a human barricade around the entrance to the Scarlet Mines. Oh, here are the cops. <laughs> I am unhappy with the treatment. I am receiving, or something, it might be something revolting maybe, as a worker in the something mine. Better hours now, or none at all. Okay. Some of these guys don't even have any signs. For a second I thought he had a beer, and I was like, oh. <laughs> Turned into a tailgate. Oh. Let me save, actually. Is this a strike? They're striking? Some miners were talking about it in the diner yesterday, and it looks like they managed to convince almost everyone to join up. The collapse must have been a breaking point for a lot of people. Yeah, I wouldn't want to go back underground. The day after the kids were trapped in a mine collapse, either. I'm never stepping foot in a mine ever again. It's time Tabitha stopped taking her workforce for granted. I hope it's not weird to talk to them while they're in the middle of all this. Don't worry, I know these guys. Most of them in the diner are at least a couple days a week. Don't worry, I know these guys. Most of them are in the diner at least a couple days a week. They'll be chill. Will they be chill, talking to Tabitha's cousin, though? Well, if it isn't our boss's cousin. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But maybe having Avery with us will be big. Is there any option to have Avery? Okay. Hail and well met, fellow countrymen. What goes on here? How goes the strike? Shouldn't you be digging those kids out of the mine? Any word about how those kids got stuck in the mine? Go visit the dig site. Why are the cops here? Because it's a strike. Probably, I think. Or because they just got nothing to do. I mean, they always have their donuts and coffee. Haven't you had... Have any of you seen Stella? I guess we could start with that. The YouTuber? She's the one on all the banned from property posters, right? We haven't seen her. And we've been out here all day, so we'd know if she came by. We'll make sure to keep an eye out. Can't say we'll be too much help, though. We, we just, we'll just be standing around here for the foreseeable future. Fair. How goes the strike? Wouldn't you like to know? You can see for yourself, it's going strong. A major collapse happened on the property not two days ago, and the boss wants us to go on about our work as usual. I'm not going back in there, knowing death or seriously bodily harm could come at me any second. I care more about living than I do about my paycheck. There's a lot that could stand to change around here, and it seems like damn near everybody thinks so too. What are your grievances? We'd like competitive pay, eight hour shifts instead of 12 or more, improvements to the sick day and vacation policies. Honestly, the eight hour shifts make sense. I mean, they've been working way too long. I don't know what their other policies are though, but if she's working them that hard, then it, you can derive that their other stuff is bad too and a thorough safety inspection before any of us set foot underground again. That collapse was way too close to the action. That collapse was way too close to the active mine for me to feel safe down there until I know for sure I won't wind up buried under two tons of rock. This place is supported by labor of folks who are too desperate for work to care about the conditions they work under. It runs them ragged, then spits them out when they're too broken to keep going. I've seen it time and time again. 
We're going to change a lot of things. There's no reason we should be treated like we're a disposable workforce. If we're the ones making her money, we should be making money too, not just scraping by. That's a lot of grievances. Working here seems tough. Yeah. Do you think Tabitha can even make those changes without the mines going under? I'm sure she can figure it out. I'm not saying she's a bad boss. People clearly aren't happy with her. But Cole's getting used less and less, and I've seen that old Scarlet House. It's practically condemned. If she has money to spare, where's it going? I really didn't peg you as someone who'd go to bat for Tabitha. I'm not. I'm just trying to get the full picture here. If the mine fails, I don't see how Aunt Winnie's diner doesn't fail with it. Okay, but that's a whole that's the whole problem. A single family shouldn't be able to hold an entire town hostage. The workers need to stay in the business. Fair enough. That makes sense. I don't know, there's a lot to unpack there. But maybe this will all be resolved by Tabitha finally deciding to be gracious. By Tabitha finally deciding to be a better leader and more, you know, and allow what everyone deserves and find a way to make it work. You know, maybe that's how the game will end. It'll all ride on Tabitha's shoulders. And if you were completely, you know, a jerk to Tabitha the whole time, then, you know, maybe it'll have a really bad ending. I don't know. Any word about those kids getting stuck in the mine? We've heard voices, so we know they're alive. Now we just have to get them out. We've got a team working in shifts to dig them out. We may be striking, but that just means we're not making the boss any money. Not that we won't do everything we can for the kids who need us. Can we visit the dig site? No way, there's a ton of dangerous equipment there, and the men working to rescue those kids don't need any more distractions. It's bad enough having parents breathing down their necks. They're making the job that much harder. They have every right to be at the dig site, but that one woman... Becca's mom? Yeah, they're being hassled enough as it is. Fair. I guess that means that's it for the mines. Come on, I'll drive us back to town and we can figure out our next move from there. I could have talked to Tabitha, but... I don't know if she would appreciate that. Because I'd be bringing these other people with me, you know? Let's go to the diner. Good idea. Folks tend to congregate right there. Maybe we'll run into someone who's seen Stella. Here's to hoping Winnie doesn't try to rope me into clocking early. <laughs> That's why I wanted to come in here at last. Because I didn't want to lose Avery. <laughs> the diner is busier than you've ever seen it. The small booth's packed with miners. So I guess this is where the miners are setting up shop. When you asked for the morning off, I didn't think you'd be showing up with friends. Sorry, Aunt Winnie, Stella's gone missing and I've been helping these two track her down. You haven't seen her, have you? Don't you apologize, and I can't say I have. I've been a little preoccupied. This is, a gr this is great for business. These fellas can have as much free coffee as they can drink if they keep piling in like this. Do you need any help? No, 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 Sal and I can handle this. One of your friends going missing is more important than a busy shift. The miners didn't even notice you enter the diner, and instead of speaking in hushed voices, argue with each other loudly enough for you to easily overhear. I guess the shift schedules are pretty brutal, and I'd like more vacation days. I'd love to be able to see my family around the holidays, and better health benefits would be amazing. But what if she decided to fire all of us? Should be worried about you-know-who being here. Nah, I wouldn't bother. I got a call from Smith. Apparently she was poking around the mines earlier today, but it sounds like she's genuinely got her back. I... I don't know. What if it's all a trick? What if Miss Scarlet hears about this and fires me? You're only a year or so into work. <laughs> oh, is that the girl? I'm not even looking at the people. I'm just... You're only a year or so into work, and trust me, the longer it goes on, the more it sucks the life out of you. 
At first, you're just unhappy, but you figure you can weather it till you find something better. A paycheck's a paycheck. Next thing you know, you've lost years of your life to a company that doesn't give a solitary bleh about you. That uses up every free second it can suck out of its workers and pays us just enough to survive, but not so much that we can save enough to get the heck out. But we could get fired for this. But we could get fired for this. I really need the paycheck. I can't get fired. And the company housing. That makes a big difference for me. Right, the company housing. How generous of Tabitha to put you up in a company-owned shack that ain't had maintenance done in decades, taking a big chunk right out of your paycheck that sure is shit ain't going towards property tax and upkeep alone. The company housing that means almost nobody in this whole dang town owns the place they live. We have numbers on our side, Harrison. After what happened up there the other night, damn near everyone is joining the picket line. She can't afford to lose us all. We have the power here as long as we're united. So about the strike. The miners turn towards the doorway, all eyes staring at you like a deer in headlights. Look, kid, I don't care how well-intentioned Smith thinks you are. I'll be damned if we talk business in front of you. I may be the boss's cousin, but I support the strike. <laughs> that might make Tabitha really upset with us, though. I'm not saying that I don't like her, because I do like Tabitha. What do you want to do, Harrison? I, I don't know. This ain't your business. All these sorts of questions are exactly what someone trying to break a strike would be asking. Come on now, I don't think Gabs is trying to break your strike. And how would you know that? And how would you know that? This, this person's a stranger and a scarlet. Hold your horses there, Zax. I don't care if y'all stand for a good cause. I don't even care how much your bacon and eggs you've bought. If you start a fight in my establishment, you're out. Let's handle this situation like civil adults. You heard the lady. Don't get involved or we'll have to take this outside. Sorry, fellas. We won't bother you. We'll make ourselves scarce. Have any of you seen Stella? She's missing. The YouTuber. <laughs> Everyone mentions her like that. No, we ain't seen her. As you can see, we've got a lot going on today. We'd appreciate it if you didn't butt in. Wow. These people are rude. Still no sign of Stella. Okay, going to the cops, I guess. Although I think this is going to be a fruitless venture. Are you sure? Nothing against the officers of Scarlet Hollow, but... To me, everything against the officers of Scarlet Hollow, but okay. You've met them, right? Don't you think it's worth the trouble? Do you think it's worth the trouble, I think he said. As unhelpful as they are, we are dealing with a missing person. That's cop stuff. It's probably going to be more of a formality than anything, but there's no point in not covering all of our bases. Ah, oh, Duke's here. With the country music. The police station is exactly what you would expect from a town the size of Scarlet Hollow. It smells strongly of coffee and faintly of aged furniture and paper. And the general tidiness speaks of a department that doesn't get much of anything done. But you're not alone here. You enter to find a worried beau standing between you and the officer behind the desk. Big Betty wasn't just a pumpkin, Deputy Franklin, sir. She was going to be a prize winner. Raising her was the last thing me and Daddy did together. She's important to our family. The Scarlet Hollow police are spread pretty thin at the moment, young man. Any property disputes will have to wait, if indeed there is a dispute to be had. Are you sure it wasn't some animal that took your vegetable? Sir, you know Mr. Tremaine thinks that the land belongs to him. He's probably He probably thought Big Betty was his to take. He ain't coming to his door, so for all I know he might be all the way to the state fair by now with our pumpkin. Ain't there something you can do about it? Hey, I remember you from yesterday. You're the mayor's security guy. He's also the guy we saw at... with Stella. Bo, did you manage to find your dad? What's all this about a pumpkin? Good question, but are you part of a cult? I don't think someone would answer that. Yeah, first rule of fight club on that one. Okay, I'm gonna go with the street smart. 
Listen up, Franklin, we've got a missing person on our hands. Stella hasn't been seen since yesterday, and last anyone saw, she was in a state of distress. You speak with complete authority in your voice. Franklin's sunglasses are impenetrable, but you can imagine the eyes behind them methodically scanning you like a machine. Oh, <gasps> he took them off. We've never seen him take them off. Oh wait, yeah, we have once, right? A missing person. Apologies, Mr. Calloway, but I'm going to have to handle this first. Deputy Franklin makes his way behind his desk, pulling out a few forms before returning to the front. If one of you could fill these out, please. I can take care of that. Thank you so much for taking this seriously, Mike. I know Stella has a tendency to go on hiking trips, but this feels different. She can't be in her right mind going back out in them woods after what happened to my daddy. I'll be praying for her and I'll make sure Mama does too. Are you sure you can't start looking right now? She shouldn't be off on her own when there are so many dishlings around. Dishlings? Abs taught me about them yesterday. Them things that got my daddy. I called them, I called about them last night too, since they've been coming up out of the woods onto the farm. I even saw some on my way here, plain as day. Oh, is he the one that was writing stuff in the forum? <laughs> I remember the call in question. We may have gotten a few calls from other folks as well. But Huggaby and Dirksen don't seem to be too concerned. I trust the sheriff on this one. Have Huggaby and Dirksen seen them? Have you? Those things are everywhere right now. They're the most concerning thing I've seen in this town since I first moved here. Look, we're stretched thin enough as it is. If you think the town should have dedicated animal control department, you're welcome to take that up with the mayor. Your dog? Take it up with your friend's cousin. Oh my god. And to answer your question, ooh, typo there. Your question, my orders are to the man, to the man, to the man, sta to man the station. God, I couldn't read that right. But I'll be sure to start an investigation as soon as I'm relieved. Bo, did you manage to find your dad? Aww, I feel so bad. Bo's stoic expression breaks, and for a moment, you can almost see tears forming in his eyes, but he blinks them away. No, I ain't found him. I had to stop looking so I could stay home and guard the farm. There are more of those things every minute, it seems like. Do you think they'll go back to where they came from soon? I'm personally doing everything I can to send them packing. Sybil says they don't hurt people. Did she say that? I don't remember. Halloween's in like just a few days. I'm sure they really help set the mood. Sybil says they don't hurt people. I ain't too worried about myself or mama. It's the animals they keep trying to drag off. They're stealing food out, f out of our mouths. And it doesn't seem to matter how many of them I pop. They just keep coming. And those are daddy's chickens. He'd want us to keep him safe for him. But I'm doing my part, taking out as many of those nasty little things as I can. But I can't stop feeling like things are gonna get worse. Maybe that's just the way people feel after something bad happens. No, I think you might be onto something. It's getting weirder every day. My mom did say the ditchlings are supposed to be some horrible omen, but that doesn't mean it's true. For all we know, the weird stuff is behind us and those creepy little things will crawl back to wherever they came from and Scarlet Hall will go back to normal. But I guess it doesn't hurt to plan for the worst. I just want to remind you all that you're speaking in front of a member of the law enforcement and any and all suspicious statements are being cataloged. Seriously, do you really not have anything better to do than to pin disasters on the innocent people who are trying to stop them? I'm not at the liberty to discuss whether or not I have anything better to do. What the heck? He's so rude. Oh my god. Then go find Stella. Exactly. But I do see why he has to be here. Someone has to be at the station. That, I think that's like a legality thing. But it is- he is really annoying. <laughs> Regardless. Yeah, when we- I just remember with the dog when he was sitting there. Uh, and at one point he's like, I'm gonna have to ask you 
to step away from the mayor. And it's like, it's a dog. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not even touching him. I'm gonna have to ask you to step away, you know? Like, like you're some kind of threat to a dog. What's all this about a pumpkin? Julius Tremaine stole Big Betty, and I'm trying to get the police to talk to him. And I've been telling Mr. Calloway that there's no way to prove who the vegetable in question belonged to. If there's no documentation, it's your words against his. The Calloways and the Tremaines have been at this for a long time. Some feud from over a century ago split the families, and they've been at it ever since. What makes you think Julius stole it? He's been claiming Big Betty was his since day one, on account of he thinks it was planted on his side of the property. He's never been good about the property line, same as every Tremaine that came before him. We get our fair share of calls from Mr. Tremaine as well. Okay, oops, sorry, I didn't mean to hit it, but whatever. I think y'all get the gist. <laughs> The Calloways and Tremaines have been at this since forever. It's practically a part of the town's foundation at this point. I was hoping we'd get a reprieve from his nonsense after what happened to my daddy, but it doesn't look like he's willing to give us any time to grieve. You know, Julius is a friend of mine. He's a lot of things, and he's definitely a bit of a curmudgeon, <laughs> but I've never pegged him as a thief. I didn't know Julius ever talked to anybody. Talk is a strong word, but I like to think we have some kind of understanding. I think he kind of explained why it's valuable, but I guess we can ask. She was gonna get us a blue ribbon. Daddy said, oops, oh God, sorry, I'm so sorry. We were supposed, we was supposed to be at the state fair by now, but it doesn't look like that's gonna happen this year. And Mr. Tremaine, Ain't even come into his door to answer for what he done. Just hold up like the coward he is. At the very least, he could give me back some seeds from what's left of her so I can try again next year. She was an important pumpkin to our family. You know, I haven't seen him since Tuesday. He's usually in the diner every day. Not necessarily a big deal for a lot of people, but he never misses his morning joe. So maybe he isn't a thief. Could be something happened to him. If he ain't a thief, then who stole our pumpkin? Beats me. I just don't think folks should be so quick to jump to conclusions. I agree. Maybe something happened to him. How would you even move a 2,000 pound pumpkin? Jeez, um, that's really... It's a lot. Classic Southern family dispute. How do you even move it? I don't know how he did it, but he did it. It could have easily been a bear, or a mountain lion, any large animal. This guy just claims everything is a large animal and leaves it at that. We're not no bear, we're hunting folk, we know the signs. This was a man's work, and that means it was Mr. Tremaine. We don't know if it was Mr. Tremaine, dude. We really don't know. Want me to go over there and kick his ass for you, though? Sorry for everything that's happened, Bo. I appreciate that, thank you. I'm trying not to let it get me. Gotta be strong for Mama now that it's just the two of us. You know, Mike, it sounds like Bo has a real case here. It's not just two neighbors getting angry at each other. Property's been stolen. Couldn't you get involved on his behalf just this once? After everything he's been through. This isn't the first time there's been some theft between the Calloways and the Tremaines. We've heard it all. We know exactly how it'll play out. Trust the police to do the policing, ma'am. God, this guy. But then he actually doesn't do anything. You're ice cold, Deputy Franklin. It's his prized pumpkin we're talking about. Help a guy out. I'm gonna say, what would it take to get the cops involved? Why are you looking to escalate the situation? None of us are planning on doing any escalating. We're just asking questions. Good. Let's keep it that way. I promise I won't do nothing bad, Mr. Deputy, sir. You know, even if Julius didn't take Big Betty, it might be worth doing a welfare check. Look, kid, I'd love to help, but the sheriff has a standing order not to step foot on the Tremaine homestead. The man loves his booby traps. Oh my god. 
<laughs> That's really funny. That's never stopped me. Of course it's not stopped you, Avery. Avery's too cool for school. I don't make the rules. You'll have to take it up with Sheriff Huckabee. If I may, sir, ain't that a mite bit cowardly of you? I thought police officers were supposed to be brave. This isn't about courage, Mr. Calloway. This is about public safety. <laughs> public safety, my ass. It's about the sheriff's judgment and authority outweighing my own. Mm-hmm. Okay, whatever you want, dude. You know, those glasses really make you feel like you can just handle anything, doesn't it? Look, I've been to Julius's a hundred times. I can tag along and make sure no one gets hurt. Look, I'll pass it along when he gets back. But he has his hands full right now. I can't make any promises. Kanika hands the completed report back to Deputy Franklin. Thank you, ma'am. I'll get this filed right away. Good luck out there. Oh wait, that was- I used Bo's voice on accident. <clears throat> Thank you, ma'am. I'll get this filed right away. I hope Miss Richmond is alright and you'll find her soon. We'll be on our way. Best you keep your nose clean out there, Abs. Try to stay out of trouble. Why is he so sus of me? <laughs> the achievement is why won't they just do their jobs? And it's the, uh... The sheriff with his coffee cup. Because <laughs> he's never without his coffee, you know? Well, at least we filed a report. Still, I guess finding Stella's going to be mostly up to us. We've got to find out what's been going on with Julius, too. He's been missing from the diner for a few days. It's weird. He usually comes in every single day. Maybe he's preoccupied with the ditchlings. I just hope he's okay. One problem at a time. Yeah, where to next? As you consider your next steps, you remember your appointment with Sybil. She seemed to be confident last night that Stella would be okay. Maybe she'll be able to help you find her. She's the only person who believed in you and Stella from the beginning. She could prove to be a valuable asset. And she'd never disparage your gift. Perhaps she's one of the few people in town who can truly understand you. We should talk to your mom. I'm supposed to have tea with her today. Sure, we can humor her. She's probably going to give you some rocks or bundles of herbs for protection or something. Which might actually work. Who knows? Guess there's only one way to find out. Let's do it. Yes, Avery, come with us, please. The bells of the general store chime welcomely as the three of you enter. Kanika, there you are. You were supposed to stay in bed today, remember? Ah, uh, hello, you two. Hope you've both recovered from last night's fiasco. Sorry, Mom, it's just that Stella's missing and I. Stella can take care of herself. Unlike you, you need bed rest and lots of fluids. You need to. You don't need to go running around town spreading that cold of yours. Go on up to bed. I'll be up in a minute with more tea. I thought you had some kind of important thing to talk to Abs about. I'm really feeling okay. I want to hear what you wanted to say to her. You're definitely not up for it after all that running around. And besides, I'll be doing a tea reading. Those always bore you to tears. Go upstairs, sweetie. Okay, you're right. I'm not feeling well. I really should lie down. Bye, Abs. Adios. Kanika turns and heads toward the stairs without saying another word. Good thing Kanika has her mom to look out for her. She seems so tired today, and you'll be able to find Stella without her. And I'm so sorry to be a bad host, Avery, but I was hoping Abs and I could do our reading in private. I'm sure Winnie needs help at the diner. No, I want Avery to stay with me. <laughs> I don't want him to leave. He's grown on me so much. I wish I would have accompanied him on the first day. Um, although I really did, I mean the second day. I really did want to accompany Tabitha and I'm glad I did, but I think it would have been Avery or Stella that I would have chosen. And I wish, I almost wish I could go back and pick Avery. Maybe I will, just to see what he'd say. I love Avery. Oh, you're right. I totally left her on her own today. Fine by me. Wouldn't want to mess with your tea vibes. I'm sure those leaves are very particular. Oh, before I go, I did want to ask. Are you a witch? Street smart. Avery does not beat around the bush. As flattered as I am that you think I'm magical, I'm just an old lady who likes tea and has a few unusual hobbies. Looks like I'm saying, 
doing stuff like- Look, I'm just saying. Doing stuff like reading tea leaves is pretty witchy as far as I'm concerned. But I won't push it. Though just so you know, if you are a witch, you can totally tell us. We'd be cool about it. I'll leave y'all to your not supernatural private tea leaf reading. We'll catch up tomorrow, Abs. I love Avery. Come back, Avery. They make their way out of the general store, disappearing down the street in the direction of the diner. Shall we? Sybil motions towards the tea room. Let's go! I'm really excited for this. Please have a seat. I'll bring you a fresh cup. You take a seat at the small table at the edge of the room. It's dark here, only a sliver of sunlight, able to filter through the heavy curtains, supplemented by the bright grow supplemented by the bright glow, grow lights over the plant in the corner whoa that drawing is so pretty and it looks so more like realistic like i don't know how to explain it i'm in no way an artist <laughs> at least as far as drawing is concerned i do like to doodle but I'm definitely, I've never had the classes or training that people have, many people do have, um, or at least understanding to be able to explain how wonderful this is, but she really looks more like, she looks less 2D the way that she's drawn here and how close up she is. It's kind of scary a little bit because, I mean, I don't know, something crazy could happen. But it's also exciting. Sybil joins you at the table and places a cup in front of you. It smells light and citrusy with an undercurrent of decaying earth. It's the same tea you sampled with Avery at the diner on Tuesday. I'll be able to do a reading once you're done. Until then, how about we just chat? What if it's the tea? What if it's the tea? Everybody drinks this tea. It's very sus. So how did you wind up in Scar's Hollow? Scarlet Hollow. <laughs> oh my god, this is ridiculous. The other day you promised to tell me. What was it? Unsavoring tales of my mom's youth. What's with, what's with all the mystery and ritual? If you have something to tell me, just come out and say it. I'll start with, so how did you wind up in Scarlet Hollow? Oh, my family's been here in these hills for a long time. That's how I know so much of the local flora. Everything I've learned was handed down from generations of hill folk. There hasn't always been a reliable doctor up here, especially not one most folks could afford. They have to figure out their own medicine. Ah, interesting. I think they mentioned at the beginning, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think they mentioned at the beginning that they're of uh, Native American ancestry, which is so cool. Like, to have that background to medicine and everything, and for it to literally be, like, coming from nature. Like, to me, that's so cool. <laughs> you know, like, tea helps me way better. I mean, depends on the tea, but tea helps me way better when I feel sick or when I have a headache than, you know, taking a pill for it. <laughs> But that's just my opinion. The other day you promised to tell me unsavory tales of my mom's youth. I most certainly did, though I might have been exaggerating a bit for dramatic effect. I'm prone to do that. In a town this size, you need to get to know everybody, no matter what age, what the age difference might be. Vivian was a little younger than me, which meant I always had a certain older in sister instinct about her. Her family wasn't good to her. Pearl Ann was a lot like your great grandmother, Edwardine, which is to say she was not a very kind woman. Similar to Tabitha, but with more social grace and considerably more hatred for her fellow man. But your mother wasn't a shrinking violet either. She was just as stubborn as any other Scarlet. So her family choosing her as their punching bag made her into quite the rebel. That honestly makes sense. 
Why were Pearl, Anne, and my mother raised by Edward Dean? What happened to their mother? What do you know about my grandma? Okay, I'm gonna ask the first one first. Their entry to this world was violent, I'm afraid. Their mother was young, too young to be pregnant, especially with twins. She did not survive the labor. Damn, that's horrible. What do you know about my grandma? I'm afraid there isn't much I can tell you. I think there were two in that generation. The eldest died when the girls were still children. Edwardine never spoke about them, nor did your mother. I feel like I know a lot about the women in my family, but what about the men? Did they even exist? Yeah, remember when we were talking to Tabitha and it's like any guy that's ever existed has like run the heck out of, Star out of uh, Scarlet Hollow. So it's like, <laughs> like, and she's like, oh yeah, I'm not even pursuing it. You know, like there's just no like, I mean, well, we all know Tabitha kind of swings the other way anyway. Um, but even if she was bi, you know, like she's like, yeah, I'm not even interested. And every guy has turned out to be like a jerk or something, it seems. At least in the family I'm talking about. What happened when my mom found out she was pregnant? Okay, I'm gonna ask the first one. About the men in the family. I suppose there just haven't been very noteworthy since Edwardine took over the mines. Her husband died a long time ago, and to be quite honest, I can't even recall his name. Might have been Stuart, or something just as forget forgettable. Jeez. I'm sorry to all you Stuarts out there, it's pretty harsh. From what Vivian said, her father was some teenaged fling that ended once your grandmother found out she was pregnant. I'm fairly certain it was similar for Vivian, though she was much older, and I believe she was the one who ended it. What was skipping town and all? What happened when my mom found out she was pregnant? She came to me for advice. She was distraught. It was like she'd been handed a death sentence. Maybe it was fear from what had happened to her own mother. Maybe it was something else. But she seemed convinced she was in danger. Tabitha had already been born by then, of course, but she was born in wedlock. So I assumed your mother's worries had something to do with religion. Though the Scarlets weren't particularly religious, as far as I knew. But the way Vivian was that night she came to me, it stuck in my mind. It's always had me wondering what it was about your family that made her panic so much at the thought of having a baby. Sip your tea. This does seem like a very good moment to just be like, you know, it's about me. You take the tea, sipping it delicately. The citrus smell is fleeting quickly replaced with the earthiness at its core. You've taken in a mouthful of dirt. But the aftertaste combines the two flavors into something soothing and medicinal. And you find yourself feeling more comfortable, your muscles relaxing for the first time in days. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely got something in there that relaxes you. I am gonna say this because I am curious as to what she's gonna say. What's with all the mystery and ritual? If you have something to tell me, just come out and say it. And if I'm straightforward with Sybil, she's not mean back. Sybil is not, you know, she's not as defensive as many other people in this town are. I'll need your tea leaves first. I have pieces of the puzzle, but the leaves should help me give the... Yeah. I'll need your tea leaves first. I have pieces of the puzzle, but the leaves should help to give me the full picture finish the tea. You close your eyes and take another sip, then another. It's delightful. The tea is gone before you know it. A small cup, empty, save for what's left of the rehydrated leaves coating the bottom. Oh good! Glad you found the tea palatable enough to drink. It should do you some good. It's one of my more medicinal blends. Now on to business. Sybil takes the cup from you, staring thoughtfully down at the sludge. Oh dear, this doesn't bode well. You've got just about every warning that can fit in the bottom of a cup. Cross, kettle, 
hourglass. All of these mean death, misery, difficulty, and the hourglass ties it all together with definite urgency. Wait, it said cross? Wait. Something cross and hourglass. So we see what hourglass means. Would cross be difficulty and misery? I don't know what the first one was. I can't remember. It's fair to assume that this all has to do with whatever brought the ditchlings. Something is coming, and whether any of us can stop it, I'm not sure. But we may at the very least be able to figure out what it is. And there's a central figure here. A cat. An enemy. Lurking in plain sight. Oh my god. It's totally frou-frou. If it's an actual cat. <gasps> Could it be Dr. Kelly? I say it's Reese. <laughs> I don't think it's Reese. How do I know you are not the cat? That's what I want to say, rather than point the blame at anyone. Because that could go anyway. But I feel like she could be using it as a metaphor. Or a simile. I can't remember which one uses like and or like or as. <laughs> but it's the one that doesn't use like or as. Because she says an enemy lurking in plain sight, so. I feel like it would be really obvious to be Dr. Kelly, too. How do I know you're not the cat? That's ridiculous. Sybil is helping you. And if she was the cat, why would she warn you about herself? Pick someone else. Really? <laughs> Could I say this one? Dear, the cat isn't a literal cat. Like I said, it's a symbol for an enemy lurking in plain sight. Probably a human enemy, but most certainly not a cat. You don't have to figure out the answer right away. It often takes time for the mind to connect the dots. Just be on your guard and keep vigilant that someone close to you isn't to be trusted. We know from the ditchlings that something terrible is coming your way, and it's likely that it's connected to some hidden enemy. Perhaps we can try to counteract whatever might be planned for you. Judging by what you told me last night, those stones, carvings, seals, whatever you want to call them, I think it's likely they have something to do with this. Until the cat reveals itself, it seems you're like your best course of action is to seek these carvings out, piece together what you can from your visions, and arm yourself with information. Have you sensed any others around town? Do you think you might be able to find another? Do you think the cat is me? No way, right? I honestly can't think about anyone else that's evil, unless it's Reese. I mean, I am staring at the door right now, but I mean, honestly, what do you guys think? Do you think it's Reese? Do you think it's Dr. Kelly? I really don't think it's her. But I think I've mentioned that a lot, so. Maybe it's, um, let's see. Who else is there? Um, I don't think it's Avery. But I mean, it could be, it could be, see, the thing is, is with anyone else, besides Tabitha, I 100% don't think it's Tabitha. Because Tabitha was just as scared as we were when everything was happening she was with us every step of the way and she was horrified um and unless she's doing a complete like banger job and deserves an oscar <laughs> i don't think that it's tabitha um i think the thing with anyone else is that we don't know them well enough we don't know anyone in this town well enough to really be able to have information on them there are some people that looks more suspicious than others, but I don't know. I don't know who else it could be. And there's different reasons why you would think that it's one person versus another. It's really cool how they've done the characters to where you can like, um, you can kind of derive that from everyone. Cause like Avery, I think is super cool. It's like, you know, subjective. 
But then there's also, like, he has a very fun way that he sees things, but there's also kind of a darker tone to it. Like, does he really believe what he's saying or not? I don't think he does, personally, but that's up for possibility. Um, Reese, kind of the same thing, but maybe even darker. Um, Reese loves the darkness, and he openly admits it, but... He seems to want better. And he seems like he's ignorant of some things. Maybe he chooses to be ignorant. Maybe things are very different when it's just him and his mom in the house. Don't know. Um, Very ominous door. You know, something behind this door. We don't know. Um, I'm not going to get into Dr. Kelly again, because I'll go on a tangent. Kanika... I don't know what Kanika's motive would be. Please feel free to let me know if you know or if you have some ideas because I'd be curious. I don't know what her motive would be because she didn't even want to believe in anything or uh, give it any kind of... uh, shed any light on it whatsoever. Um, So I really don't think that it's her. Um, It could also be... Uh, Stella. But I feel like it's really hard to believe that it would be Stella. But it could be, I guess. Um, She's had a really horrible past. Um, She tends to be secluded. Um, She's nice to everyone, but it would one-up. You know, if it was her, it would be really interesting. Um, It could be Wayne, but Wayne has helped us, though. You know, so I don't really know if it's Wayne. I feel like he's kind of an obvious one, too. You know, so I really don't know. I feel like I'm missing someone. Oh, Oscar. It could be Oscar. I don't think it's Oscar. (laughs) I feel like Oscar is such a sweetheart. Um... He does have a lot to be upset about, too. But, I don't know. I think that if the evil entity was trying to tell us anything, it was that it was Stella. Stella's the first person that came out. Um, The person that treated us most horribly. Stella wanted to go in, though I think that's kind of just her personality. Um, And then she's gone immediately. You know? But I really don't... I, I have a hard time believing that it's her. But anyway, feel free to leave your ideas below. I'm really curious to see where this could go. Um, I'm so inter- I'm so excited for this update. It's been a long time coming, as always, but I'm sure they will live up to the hype, as they always have. Um, This game is so enjoyable. I was thinking, this is completely off topic, and I'll get back to the game in a second. I was thinking that if it's going to be this long for another update, that I'll do another run where we do some different traits and we spend time with different people so that we learn, at least learn some more about the story so that when we come back for the next update, we'll have a little bit more information um, to work with. Even if it's not in this playthrough, we'll know, you know, like, okay, this and this gives us context for this Um, and further knowledge of the characters. Because the thing is, is if you get to choose which characters you think it could be, then if you spend time with the wrong people, couldn't that just throw off the whole thing? Oh, maybe the cat was Pearl Ann. I don't think that was an option. I just thought about that. Anyway, let's return to the game. I take a sip first. (laughs) Very thirsty. Your thoughts drift to that door yesterday, the one that seemed to draw you in, urging you deeper into the clinic. 
Even just remembering it is enough to tug at you, compelling you to return and open it to see what's on the other side. You can find Stella later. Maybe you can even find her there. What's important now is finally seeing what's hidden in the clinic. <gasps> That's how I feel too! You didn't get all this from the tea leaves. <laughs> it's an explorer, so we'll do it. Of course she didn't. She's smart. She knows how to deduce things from the leaves. Of course not. Tea leaves are merely a guide. Sometimes they help confirm suspicions or fill in where my intuition falls short. My family has lived in these hills for a long time, as has yours. I know the Scarlets have secrets. I know Vivian was scared for you, but your place in all of this is something we have to figure out together. And that's where little tricks like tea leaves come in handy. But we shouldn't digress. Do you know where you might find the next stone? It's gotta be in the clinic, because it was drawing it to us. But bad stuff always happens around them, yeah. I think seeking it out is the only way for us to progress, though. But maybe that's a dumb thing to say. That's good. If you can find your way inside and uncover the another stone, that could give you a leg up on your adversary. You'll just have to be careful to avoid the doctor. Something tells me she won't take too kindly if you're sniffing around her clinic. I think that's all the help I can offer. I hope this conversation has been illuminating, even if it just brought up more questions than giving any clear answers. I feel like she's our, um, she's our curator. You know how in the Dark Pictures uh, series and all their, all their games, um, it's just like, <laughs> they always have the curator or somebody that you talk to. That's, I, I think that she's like our person to talk to, you know, our little uh, moment of peace and like reason trying to give you advice and push you forward. You helped last night. Why don't you come with me? I may have been able to see through that spirit's illusions, but I'm not some kind of all powerful entity. I'm an old woman. I have trouble with my knees and my eyesight isn't what it used to be. In most situations, I'd be more of a liability than a helpful companion. Imagine if I'd been in those mines with you, some use I'd be, struggling to climb over rocks and ladders, throwing my back out from all the crouching. All you did was look at some leaves and tell me to go put myself in danger. Thanks, I'll let you know if, you, if I find anything. Glad to hear it. I hope all goes well, and I wish you luck. Hopefully you won't need it. Thank you again for humoring an old lady and stopping by for a chat. With a small grunt of effort, Sybil gets up from the table and you're escorted back to the door. And remember, be careful who you put your trust in. According to your tea, the cat is getting ready to pounce and merely being ready for it might not be enough. Who could it be? Who could it be? I honestly, I'm completely, I feel like what if it's more obvious than my brain is thinking? Sybil closes the door to the tea room, the bells of its door strangely flat in the stale air of the nearly empty general store. No, wait, no, it makes sense. So the sound of the bells is strangely flat, you know. <laughs> Should I even try to talk to Miles? <laughs> oh my gosh. Is your mom a witch? Ghost are real, I just thought you should know. Can you imagine if someone just approached you and was like, hey kid, ghosts are real, thought you should know, and then leaves and you're just like, what? <laughs> so Kanika has a cold, huh? You see any weird rocks around town? Yeah. You. <laughs> what the heck? Clearly, this is a very sick burn, and you should feel bested by his wit. <laughs> That's really funny. I like that. I'm so glad I asked. 
ghosts are real. Just thought you should know. <laughs> yeah, I know. I've seen tons of videos of ghosts doing stuff on the internet. I'm not 12. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna go back. You're not going anywhere before checking in on Kanika. You make your way upstairs. Okay. Knocking on her door. Mom, I really don't need any more tea. I think I'm just going to lie down for a while. Uh, I'm not your mom. <laughs> oh, Abs, what's up? Can I come in? I was hoping we could spend a little more time together. I need to talk to you. It's important. She does- I think she doesn't like people going in her room, right? Sorry, my mom was right. I'm exhausted. I probably shouldn't push it or I'll wind up worse off tomorrow. Looks like you're on your own. Oh no, we're going by ourselves. No, why can't somebody be with me? I'm scared. <laughs> Such a wimp. You make your way out of the general store and down the road to the clinic. I got this. I totally got this. You make your way up the familiar hill, past the rows of ragged houses that make up Scarlet Hollow's residential area. 